Hey guys, it's Tom with Watchman River. Thanks for joining me today. I'm glad that you're here on this, you know, rainy day here in the middle of Connecticut. You may hear some rain throughout the uh, the video, but we'll survive it, right? Uh, look, I may call this video, Have They Already Sacrificed the Red Heifer? Because I, I got some speculation that I think they may have done it already. I'm going to talk about why and how and who and... Um, but I first, I got to tell you something because I'm, I'm having a really big food craving this morning and I won't eat till four o'clock today. So, so I, but I, so if I talk about my food craving, maybe I'll feel like I took a bite of it. But what I want today so badly is a good BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich. All right. I want the bacon cooked perfectly. I don't want it rubbery. I don't want it burnt. I want it lightly crisp. I want the lettuce to be fresh. I want the tomato to be fresh in season if possible. And I want it on white bread. I want the white bread toasted. I want some mayonnaise on it. Maybe I'll even stick a little toothpick in it, you know, but that's what I'm craving today. Now, if that's something that sounds good to you, would you please have that for me, please? And if that doesn't sound good, don't touch that recommendation with a 10 foot pole. Don't have it. All right. But that's what I'm craving. All right. All right. So, where do I go from here? Scripture. We got to do scripture first. If we don't do scripture, we're wasting our time. Let's do a few verses about faith. Okay, here we go. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's one of my absolute favorite verses. When people say to me, I just, my faith is weak. My faith, it's like, are you in the word of God? Are you hearing the word of God? Are you listening to teaching? Are you reading the word? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I love that. I love that verse. Romans 12 verses three. Can you guys tell I'm like on 10 today? <laughs> For I say, through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Each one of us has a measure of faith. That's a beautiful thing. And yeah, thinking too highly of ourselves, thats a, that can be an easy thing to do. I actually don't have that problem. <laughs> I'm usually thinking pretty lowly of myself. But All right, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Praise be to Jesus. Let's do two more, maybe three more. Let's go to Romans chapter 1, verse 17. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. It's from faith to faith. Man, I love the word of God. Let's do one more. Let's do Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it's, it is impossible. Listen to this. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. I love that. I love that. I'm telling you, I always tell non-believers, you, if you don't believe, you seek him. Say, Jesus, I don't believe in you. Reveal yourself to me. I'm seeking your face. You'll be surprised what happens. You really will. Okay, we got to get busy. All right, I'll try to calm down a little bit. So I'm going to start off with something Bubba News shared. OK, about this, because CBS News on Saturday morning covered the red heifers. I'll try to put the link in the description below to that five minute video. They did a five minute piece on the red heifers. And this is what Bubba News had to say about it. He said, reported by CBS Saturday morning news of all things on March 2nd, a massive high altar has already been built in Jerusalem. They are quietly getting ready for the red heifer sacrifice and burning ceremony to produce the heifer ashes in the next few weeks on the Mount of Olives overlooking the Temple Mount where the Jewish temple once stood. The video discusses how there is something in the way of where the Jewish temple once stood, the Dome of the Rock, and how it must go away. 
it's going to go. This is a quote from the video. It's going to go. I believe 100%. The whole thing's going to go. We have to build a temple. Hamas said the Al-Aqsa flood of October 7th is in direct correlation to the threat of the red heifer sacrifice on their holy hill where their Al-Aqsa mosque is. The Al-Aqsa imam said that these Israeli provocations are kicking a hornet's nest of Muslims around the world. So many fuses are getting ready to be lit. Now, those were Bubba News's words. Okay. So, I watched this video. And a friend of mine who texted me the video said to me, if you haven't seen it yet, here's the mainstream media report on the red heifers. Of note... There are only three red heifers left. I strongly suspect the oldest red heifer has already been sacrificed. So I thought about this. So I put the video on. I'm watching the video. And the last we heard, there were four perfect red heifers. We kept hearing there were five originally. And then we heard there were four perfect ones. Well, in this video, a guy is standing there tending them. And there's three. Okay. And my first thought is, why is CBS. Why is CBS? Why are they allowing a mainstream American news outlet, CBS, to be in close proximity of those heifers? Why are they allowing a mainstream news media outlet from America who doesn't really support Israel all that much to be that close and show them the high altar? And I'm thinking about it. And then my friend texts me, Regarding the red heifers, there is no way that any media would be able to see any of this if the Jews didn't feel it was safe to show them. They have the ashes. And I really, really, after watching that video, I'm looking going, you know what? And this is speculation. This, I just want to make that disclaimer. This is speculation. But when I saw three heifers and just the fact that they let that news media get that close to it, and they show the altar, they show the altar that they want to sacrifice the red heifer on on this little five minute piece. And I'm, I'm tending to agree with my friend. I, I'm tending to think, I, I bet you it's already happened. I bet you it's already happened. Just interesting, super interesting. Uh, Amir Sarfati, you know I love this brother. I, I quote him almost daily, something he's posted on Telegram. I love him. But he posted something yesterday afternoon and he said, the attack of, and he said it in all capital letters, bold. The attack of Hamas on October 7th has absolutely nothing to do with red heifers. The videos I'm receiving from people are pure sensationalism. Many people agree with him. But there's one problem, and, and this is the one thing I beg to differ on. I'm not saying the October 7th attack was all about the red heifers, but a Hamas spokesman on video, and that CBS thing even covers a second blurb of that speech. A Hamas spokesperson was listing the reasons why October 7th happened. And one of his lines is, and don't quote me exact, but it's, and then they brought those red cows. So he listed as one of the reasons October 7th happened as, and then they brought those red cows. So to say it has absolutely nothing to do with the red heifers is inaccurate, according to that Hamas spokesperson. You know, and again, I'm just going to say, I love, I love Amir Sarfati. You guys know that. And I get a lot of grief because a lot of people don't like him. I love him. He's a great brother in Christ. You know, he was involved in a movie that I so highly recommend called uh, Before the Wrath. I think it's called Before the Wrath. Incredible movie. I, I love my brother. But I, I do think October 7th had something to do with the red heifers. We're living in very interesting days, man. We are living in the final days. I am coming down here to this river every day. And I am warning and I'm feeling like I'm not going to be doing this much longer. I'm just going to say that. Okay, we're living in the final days. You guys, if you don't know Jesus, my goodness, please stay tuned. Because I'm going to beg you to get to know what he did for you. All right, what else is going on? There was a large barrage of rockets from Hezbollah last night from southern Lebanon um, into northern Israel, over 30 rockets. And I saw some video of the Iron Dome taking most of those down. Uh, what else? This is from Israel Today. Hamas official Bassem Nam tells AFP that the terror group doesn't actually know how many of the Israelis it's holding hostage in Gaza 
are still alive. They don't even have a number count of how many are still alive. Israel has demanded a list of living hostages and proof of their well-being before it moves forward with any negotiations. Yeah. The spokesman is saying, we don't know how many are alive. But yet, they can tell you exactly how many women and children died the day before in, in Gaza. To, to the number, but they can't keep track of these 130 people that they've taken what else? Amir Sarfati said, uh, according to Reuters, the talks in Cairo regarding the ceasefire ended without a breakthrough. No surprise there. No surprise there. Also, he shared a picture of uh, a video of all this international aid that the United States and other countries are dropping into Gaza. It's falling into the Mediterranean Sea. And Amir had a humorous line. He said, it's aid to the fish. You know, I don't know why that's happening. I don't understand how they can, you know, but it's a lot of it's falling into the, the sea, you know. Um, yeah, he and, and, and Israel today said much of what is falling down on land is still being stolen by Hamas. I've seen videos that are just horrible. These Egyptian truck drivers bringing aid to the Palestinians and they throw rocks and kill the driver yesterday or the day before. Breaking the windows in the front of the truck and it's just, it's a mess. It's a mess over there. It's a mess. This right here is incredible. It's shocking, but it's not when you realize we're in the end days and how wicked people are. But the this is from Israel today. The IDF releases recordings. I watched them of the UNRWA teachers taking part in the October 7th massacres. This is a quote from one of the teachers. We have female hostages. I captured one. This is an employee of the United Nations. We have female hostages. I captured one Hamas terrorist who worked as a UNRWA school teacher, says in the recorded call. The first call recording is of a Hamas terrorist working as an Arabic teacher at the UNRWA school in central Gaza, describing how he broke into the Israeli territory and stating that he is holding female Israeli hostages. The teacher was named Yusef El Hawajara and is heard stating on the call, we have female hostages. I captured one. The second recording features an additional terrorist described by the Israeli Defense Forces as Palestinian Islamic Jihad terrorist Mamda Ahmad al Khali, an elementary school teacher at the UNRWA school in Han Yunus. In southern Gaza, the IDF said, the teacher is heard telling his family that he is inside Israeli territory. I'm inside. I'm inside with the Jews. He stated the voice of the UNRWA teacher in response to a man asking him on the phone where he was. And a lot of your money has gone to that agency. You know what? This stuff doesn't rattle me because Jesus is in control and God will have his vengeance because vengeance is his. You know, sometimes we want to grab it. You know, some of my favorite movies are vengeance movies. <laughs> so sometimes we, will, we want to have vengeance. But you know what? We're going to just see how this all plays out. We're going to trust Jesus and he'll have his vengeance which will be perfect vengeance, perfect justice, because he's perfect. So, all right, what else? This is from the AP News. This broke right before I hit record. Once again, we got to give Kim Jong-un a little attention. He gets upset when we don't give him attention. North Korea threatens to take military moves in response to the United States South Korean drills. North Korea has called the ongoing South Korean United States military drills a plot to invade the country as it threatens to take unspecified responsible military steps in response. Okay, Kim, you got your attention, okay? Are you happy now? <laughs> Sorry, I gotta, I, you gotta have a little humor in these days, right? We're not just, we know who's in control. He's coming to get us soon. We have to have a little lighthearted humor, a little bit, you know? This is from Disclosed TV. Macron. We are, this is a quote from Macron. We are certainly approaching a moment in our Europe where it will be appropriate not to be cowardly. War has returned to our soil. 
Anyone who thinks, you know, that's it blows my mind when people can look around what's going around this world today and say, well, the rapture's not for 50 years. The rapture's not for 10 years. It's not for five years. It's not for hundreds of years. We will be more toasted than a marshmallow at a s'mores convention if we're left here much longer. There's too many threats and people are just, they're gone. They're just, something happened. I think it was around 2020. I think a demonic spirit fell on this world. And I think Satan knows he's in his very last days. And I'm telling you, I really believe that this world is not sustainable. We're about to leave here if you belong to Jesus. This is from Human Events. Haiti is in a state of emergency after thousands of violent criminals escape prison. Uh, Haiti's government issued a 72-hour state of emergency Sunday night, as well as a curfew after a weekend of violence during which gunmen from gangs took over two of the biggest prisons in the country and they helped thousands of inmates escape. The police were ordered to use all legal means at their disposal to enforce the curfew and apprehend all offenders. We are living in a world of lawlessness and it is ramping up every day things we see around this world. It's incredible. This is very interesting right here. Um, BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South, Korea, South America, right? South America, South Africa. The BRICS countries to develop blockchain-based payment system. This right here is the new world order. I believe these countries are heavily involved in the seven-year tribulation. And I think the one world monetary system may begin here. I, I do. BRICS focus this year is to increase its participation in the international monetary and financial system. BRICS has announced the creation of a blockchain based payment system. Over the years, the nine country grouping comprised of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa as founding nations have been working on reducing its reliance on the United States dollar for settlements. The new payment system offered by BRICS will serve as an independent system for trade settlements challenging the U.S. dollar, which is going to fall very soon. This development was revealed by Russia, which assumed the BRICS presidency on January 1st of 2024 through Kremlin aide Yuri Ushakov in an interview with Russian news agency TASS. He revealed that the system would be available to governments, businesses, and individuals. Quote, we believe that creating an independent BRICS payment system is an important goal for the future, which would be based on state-of-the-art tools such as digital technologies and blockchain. The main, th the main thing is to make sure it is convenient for governments, common people, and businesses, as well as cost-effective and free of politics, he stated. Yeah, okay, we'll see about that. We'll see about that. And it comes with a tattoo or a chip. I'm only, I just added that. That wasn't in the article. All right, what else? You guys, Clinton Township, Michigan, what happened? I saw a video and it said industrial fire with dozens of explosions in Clinton Township, Michigan. Oh my goodness, this video was crazy. It sounded like it was a bomb factory burning. I mean, there were expl audible explosions. I hope you guys are, are okay. Let us know. Let us know. What else? Some weather news. Heavy rains and snow hit Pakistan, destroying homes and leaving dozens dead. Uh, over the past four days, at least 36 people dead, 50 injured. The affected areas include the scenic Swat Valley, the Khyber District. It was a bad one. It was a bad one. Also, more than... This one was interesting. In Italy, more than 6,000 people were isolated on March 3rd, 2024, following a large avalanche in the uh, uh, Osta, uh, Osta, I think that's how you say it, valley, which struck a tunnel in the municipality of Gabi, province of Aosta, Italy. So what crazy. Last 24 hours, earthquakes. 32 over 4.0, 4 over 5.0. Not a huge earthquake day. This is Clown World. We've got to take a little stroll through Clown World right here. Because this is from MIT Technology Review. And it is most definitely C-L-O-Triple-W-O-N. Clown World. Nobody knows. This is the title. This is the headline. Nobody knows how AI works. Oh. <laughs> 
It's still the early days for our understanding of AI, so expect more glitches and fails as it becomes a part of our real-world products. I've been experimenting with using AI assistance in my day-to-day -day work. The biggest obstacle to their being useful is they often get things blatantly wrong. In one case, I used an AI transcription platform while interviewing someone about a physical disability, only for the AI summary to insist the conversation was about autism. It's an example of AI's hallucination problem where large language models simply make things up. Isn't this a beautiful technology? Let's embrace this. Tech companies are rushing AI-powered products to launch despite extensive evidence that they are hard to control and often behave in unpredictable waves. ways. This weird behavior happens because nobody knows exactly how or why deep learning, the fundamental technology behind today's AI boom, works. It's one of the biggest puzzles in AI. How does it work? I don't really know. Let's release it to the public. <laughs> Let's let send in the clowns. <laughs> Isn't it rich? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. Look at this one. This is the grocer. It's from the grocer uh, website. Gross. How bureaucracy is creeping into the UK's edible insect opportunity. Finally, eating insects is trendy again, or was it ever? There was a short-lived movement some years back when a raft of upstarts entered the market, each hailing insects as the next big protein. But the buzz died down quickly when Brits didn't embrace the, cu the cuisine. I mean, maybe they don't, don't want to eat bugs. <laughs> Leaving a few straggler brands behind. It could finally become a big and lasting movement, but for now, only as long as you're on mainland Europe. There, you can have cricket flour pizza in Italy. You can buy mealworm biscuits in Germany. And why not enjoy a beetle burger in France? Or I could just have water. Thank you. Please and thank you. No thanks. I won't be eating the bugs. I, I literally would. I would literally fast until I died before I started eating bugs. It's not my thing. I'll take water. But thank you. All right. Let us get to some a couple testimonies of the day. I got a couple good ones here. And then we'll do a few comments of the day. Okay? Pat, at the age of 42, without any knowledge of creation, suffering from extreme anxiety and emotional suffering, I sat down with my head in my hands saying, God help me. I can't do this by myself anymore. Without thinking I was talking to anyone, and in that fraction of a second, the knowledge that God is, the knowledge that God is, was branded in my brain and total peace enveloped me. Bible study came next. I will never go back to unbelief. Man, I love that. I love that. It's that whole thing I said earlier. If you seek him, you will find him. If you don't believe in Jesus and you think he's a myth, I challenge you. To say seriously, Jesus, I don't believe in you. If you're real, reveal yourself to me. Start reading the book of John in the Bible. After you've said that little prayer, just see what happens. That's all I have. That's my challenge. Sophie, I was saved when I was so little that I can't remember when it happened. I just know that Jesus revealed himself to me. And there was another kid in kindergarten who said that Jesus has to flap his arms to stay up in heaven. And I just remember thinking that you have no idea who Jesus is. I knew that he is strong, majestic, and not at all silly like she said. Hope we are all going to meet Jesus soon. I believe so. Love to you all from Sophie from Denmark. Thank you, Sophie. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's do a comment of the day. A couple of them. Deidre. Jesus fed 5,000 but only 500 followed him afterwards. He had 12 disciples, but only three went further into the garden. Only one stood with him at the cross. The closer you get to the cross, the smaller the crowd becomes. That's a powerful line right there. The closer you get to the cross, the smaller the crowd becomes. One day soon, we will all realize it was worth it in the end. Jesus loves us too much to give any of us the right thing at the wrong time. 
We may not understand it now, but we will soon. Jesus loves us too much to keep any of us where we are and is the answer to our prayers in guiding each of us to his truth and promises for our lives. Amen, Maranatha, King of Kings, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Deidre. Thank you. Thank you. But that line hit me. The closer you get to the cross, the smaller the crowd becomes. Because I thought about modern day ch churches. And man, if you if you talk about sin and you talk about the blood of Jesus, the closer you get to the cross, the thinner those churches get. Because they, they want to just hear, they want their ears tickled in these last days. They just want to hear, you you know, God's got a happy plan for you. You're going to get that car you've been dreaming of. You know, that's not biblical. Harley, I am stressed, but God's got this. I am heartbroken, but God's got me. Please, Heavenly Father, I rely on you. I need you. It's beautiful. Thank you, Harley. Uh, this YouTube account is called Isaiah 43 1. Trusting in Jesus is setting a rock foundation. Putting your trust in man or anything of this world is guaranteed to crumble. He has my soul and it has given me more peace than anything or anyone else can. Amen. Amen. This one is uh, just for humor. This is Ella. She said, no thanks. I'll just have water. My new answer to everything in the world. <laughs> I love that. You won't get that unless you watch this, these videos daily. But that's kind of funny. One more. Linda, have you ever watched an eagle rise up? It is one of the most majestic things you will ever see. The gigantic bird stands on his feet, opens his wings, and rises into the air. Most birds need to run or gain momentum in some other way to, to get lift off. The eagle just rises up. It is an absolutely beautiful analogy of how we might be lifted aloft into the rapture of Jesus. Maranatha, I love that. Thank you, Linda. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. You know, guys, we are, we are living in these very last days. We are living in the very last days. All the news, everything we're seeing, every sign we were told to look for, everything has converged. And we're waiting for the rapture of the church. I firmly believe it. I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. I wouldn't have come down to this river if I really didn't believe we are in the last days. 23 months ago, yesterday. We're in the very last days. And I was called to proclaim that he is coming soon to warn and to proclaim the gospel. And that's what I try to do every day because it's so important. And many lives have been changed. Many lives have been changed of people opening their eyes going, wait a minute, what is going on? Many believers have come around to the knowledge that, yeah, wait a minute, we're in the last days. But if you don't understand what Jesus did for you, you are literally rolling the dice on eternity. Like you're playing a very dangerous game. So I'm going to tell you what Jesus did for you. And I'm going to tell you how important it is to trust in him and to believe in his finished work and his atoning blood. And then it's your decision. Then it's out of my hands. I tell you this because I, I love people. And the thought of anyone, first of all, I'll say dying today and being eternally separated from God freaks me out. And then the thought of being left behind at the rapture freaks me out. Like I, it, it just thinking of you being left behind freaks me out because I, I literally think of all the people that will be left behind. And it's terrifying when you realize what happens during those seven years. And those seven years are ready to go. We're at that point. We're waiting for the rapture. But you don't have to be here for those seven years because Jesus did a miraculous thing. It's the greatest event in human history. It happened 2,000 years ago. There's no other event that will ever be greater than what happened 2,000 years ago, that God sent the Lamb of God, his only begotten son, Jesus, to come here, to come to earth, and Jesus left a throne in heaven to do it. And he came here and he put on human flesh and he walked the earth perfect. He never sinned once, not once, not even once. He was perfect. He miraculously fed people. He miraculously healed people. He got a bunch of dudes who were going to stone a woman to drop their stones with words, he said. And by drawing something in the sand... 
The Pharisees tried to ask him trick questions, and he answered them so brilliantly that people have studied it for 2,000 years and said only the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, could come up with those brilliant responses. He was perfect. But Jesus came here knowing the whole time he was living this life, it was all leading to him shedding his own blood to take care of our sins. Because he's the Lamb of God. He was sent here to be the sacrifice for sin, to pay for sins, all sins, every sin that's ever been committed with his own blood. Now, I always remind you because I think it adds an aspect to this where you understand the power of God. But Jesus is the one, according to John 1, that spoke everything into existence. With the power of Jesus' words, he's the creator. He created the heavens and the earth. He created the moon and the suns and the sun and the stars. He named them all. That same Jesus is the one who came here humbly as a suffering servant to die on a cross and shed blood because he loves you so much. And the only way the sin problem, the only way that God can ever forgive sins is by blood. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. It is the setup from before the foundation of the world. That's why when Adam and Eve sinned, an animal was skinned and the skins were put on them. An animal had to die because of their sin and they were covered with the skin of the animal. It's been, all, you know, the Old Testament, they would always sacrifice the animals and it would cover their sins for a year. They'd have a party. You know, they'd bring that blood into the Holy of Holies. They'd sprinkle the blood. If the sacrifice was acceptable, the high priest would come out and their sins were covered for a year. Yay. Jesus is different. Jesus is the Lamb of God, the final once and for all payment for sin. No other payment is ever coming again. Jesus is not climbing on the cross or being nailed to it again, ever, ever. He's coming back in power. Praise God. So if you're holding on to some sin and you're like, yeah, I know that Jesus forgives sin, but I did this thing so terrible that I'm not, I'll never be forgiven. You're basically saying to Jesus, go back on the cross because what you did isn't severe enough. You being marred beyond recognition and then nailed to the cross. That isn't, I did something so bad. That is really offensive. That is offensive to, the, to what Jesus did for us because he loves you. He paid for every sin with his blood. And all we have to do is say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. And I, I now I, I believe in your blood. I believe that the blood you shed has the power to wash me white as snow, to remove every sin from me that I've ever done or ever will do as far from me as the east is from the west. I have faith in your blood and I have belief that you went to the cross and you died and you were buried and you rose again the third day. And once you have faith in that blood and belief in his finished work, you are saved. You are born again at that moment. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You're sealed until the day of redemption, he'll never let you out of the palm of his hand. You will be rapture ready. You will not be left behind for what's about to hit this world at any time. You'll be saved. He did it all. He did it all. We're saved by grace, an unearned gift from God through faith, through belief in what Jesus did for us. That's what saves us. We don't do anything. We can't add anything to your salvation. You can be saved and then do a million things thinking I'm doing this to keep saved. It ain't keeping you saved. You are saved. Works are a beautiful thing. They're a beautiful thing. I really think they're a great expression. The Holy Spirit, when you have the Holy Spirit and you want to, to do things to show him you love him, but it's nothing to do with your salvation. Don't take the credit away from Jesus and try to put it on yourself because he did it all. And he is worthy of all our praise because he shed his blood to save us. Our good works are beautiful expressions of the spirit. They're beautiful expressions of our love for our Lord and savior, but they're not doing anything. To, they're nothing to do with our salvation. Nothing to do with our salvation. But I gotta tell you, like I always do quickly, the flip side of this, if you just heard everything I just said the past, I don't know, eight minutes, I, I'm just guessing, eight, ten minutes, whatever it's been. If you heard it and you're like, well, that's great, Tom, but that's not for me. I just want to live my life. Just, I don't need this. You're gravely mistaken. 
you're gravely mistaken. And if you continue this path of, I don't need this, you're going to end up on judgment day, kneeling before Jesus. Believe in him or not, you will kneel before Jesus and you will be like, oh my goodness, I'm in huge trouble because you're going to know your sins are with you. The ones that he paid for with his blood because you rejected the payment and said, no, I don't need that payment for my sins. I'm fine. I'll take my chances. You're going to be kneeling before him and he's going to say to you, away from me, I never knew you. Can you imagine hearing those words when you're kneeling before the only begotten Son of God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the judge of all, to hear away from me and you know you're being led off to hell or eternal separation from God where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. I, I just can't. I don't want that for anyone, nor does God. I don't want to believe in a God who would send me to hell. No, the God you don't want to believe in sent his only begotten son to be tortured so you don't have to go to hell. But if you say, oh, I don't believe any of that. No, thanks. You're choosing hell. God's not sending you there. He doesn't want anyone to perish. It's the greatest decision by far you have to make in your entire life. There is no greater decision then will you say yes to the payment of your sins? Will you say, yes, Jesus, I believe in your blood. I believe in your finished work. Thank you. Or are you just going to say, nah, ah, I don't want this. Let me live my life. If you do that, he will let you live your life. But you will kneel before him one day and it will be a dreaded, you're the worst moment of your existence. I don't want to see that. Just make the right decision, Okay. All right, I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and guys, today, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.